Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jeff, and on behalf of StriveScan, I want to welcome you to the International College Options Virtual College Fair this evening. First off, I want to introduce Beth with the International College Options Organization. Yes, thank you so much, Jeff. So I just wanted to do a very brief introduction about International College Options. So first we wanted to welcome you and thank you so much for attending. Um, I'm Beth Gilfillan. I'm the Director of Operations for ICO and I'm based in Chicago. So just a little background information, ICO was started in 2013 to educate high school counselors, students, and families about the opportunities for U.S. students to obtain a bachelor's degree abroad. We're a nonprofit organization with a volunteer board of current and former school counselors. So each November during International Education Week, we typically host fairs and school counselor luncheons in two or three cities. This year, as with everything else, uh, due to the pandemic, we're hosting the various fairs virtually. So we're very grateful to the 76 institutions across 18 countries who are participating in our events. Um, each year, we also produce a PDF booklet that includes information on our partner institutions. So I'll share that link in the PDF. It's also on our website. Tonight, you'll hear from the institutions in this session for about six minutes each. There are also other sessions going on at the same time. So if you'd like to connect individually with any of the institutions involved tonight, please see the PDF in the chat listing individual Zoom links or other virtual room links for each institution. And that'll be from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Time tonight. So you can go to that link and speak with the institution directly. Feel free to visit multiple institutions using their individual links in that time period, the 7 to 8 Central. We'll also be sending out a survey for participants within the next couple of weeks. We hope you'll provide feedback to us so we can approve upon our events in the future years. And I will copy those links in shortly, but thanks again so much. Thanks, Beth. Appreciate that. As a reminder to all the participants, um, your cameras are turned off and your microphones are muted. You can ask questions of the institutions through the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. And without further ado, I will turn it over to Lisa from Monash University. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, hi, I am Lisa. I'm from Monash University. I work over here in New York, actually, running our alumni engagement. Uh, so Monash University is in Melbourne, Australia. It is Australia's largest university. So we have 10 faculties. We have a lot of specialties, um, art and design and architecture, arts, business and economics, education, engineering, um, IT, law, medicine, pharmacy and science and many others that I'm missing in more specificity. Um, we're one of the top 100 universities in uh, the world, which is pretty cool. Um, we have a large enterprise approach and we have a great international reach. So obviously uh, we have some people working over here in the US working with alumni engagement. We have thousands of alumni across the US. Um, and so there are a lot of international opportunities. We have campuses in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in Italy um, and other places as well. Uh, Melbourne as a city is a really great place to live. Uh, especially if you haven't had that much experience living abroad. It's very safe. Monash are very helpful with visa processes. And um, if you're interested in studying pharmacy, ours is ranked second in the world after Oxford, which is also very cool. Um, so I've sort of stepped in last minute to talk about Monash and I'm not going to be here for very long. So if anybody has a question now, I can answer it now or I'm going to leave my email address for you to ask me questions later. I'm going to put it in the chat. Nope. Okay. I think I'm done, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. Appreciate that very much. Thank uh, you. Next up, we have Mary Immaculate College out of Ireland. That's right. Hi, everyone. How are things? Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Lisa, as well. Um, so I know the name is down as Alison Ryan on the screen for everyone, but I've stepped in for my colleague. My name is Sarah Power, and I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully, I can get technology working for me and share um, my presentation. So hopefully, you'll be able to see that. 
Jeff, please tell me um, over <laughs> the, the, the microphone there if this isn't working or people can't see it. So hopefully now I'll get everything done within the, the, the six minutes. So Mary Immaculate College, uh, we are um, a university level college of education and liberal yes. arts in Ireland. Sarah, forgive me yeah. for interrupting you. We yeah. cannot see your screen share. Okay, I wonder. Uh, let me see. Oh, control share. I see now what I did. I'm not used to Zoom. Apologies. We use um, Teams more often um, at the college. You can see it now. You're good to go. Brilliant. Brilliant. Now, how's that? If I move screen, can you see it? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Excellent. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> You're very welcome. So, um, yeah, so we are a college, a university college, um, university level college of education and liberal arts in Ireland. Um, and we are based in Limerick City in the west of Ireland. So Limerick City itself is a small city and um, our, our college itself as well is about 5000 students. So international students who do come to us, they find that they settle in really well into the college and um, into life in Limerick and Ireland as well. And we're a city based campus. So if you come to Mary Eye, as we call ourselves, you will be within the city of Limerick itself. Now, for anyone who isn't uh, overly uh, knowledgeable of the island of Ireland in terms of where we are, Limerick City, you'll see there is on the west coast of Ireland, so along the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, it's a great location for anyone to, who's interested in going surfing or outdoor life or anything like that and living in a nice small city. We, um, it's, we've got a really big third level population as well in the city of Limerick. There are three higher education institutions in the city. So you'll be surrounded by students um, and we're also beside an international airport, Shannon. Um, you might see there that 50% of Limerick's population is actually under the age 35. So it's a great young city, lots to do, easy access to outdoor life. And uh, um, it's a great place to live and study. I was a student there myself um, back a fair few years ago. Um, great sports facilities around the city if anyone is interested in that. We're the home as well of Munster Rugby if anyone's into rugby. And Hurling, which is one of Ireland's biggest traditional sports is really, really big and popular in Limerick. So, and we play a lot of these sports on campus in Mary Eye as well. And there's the rugby stadium, Thoman Stadium. And just a few pictures for you of Limerick City itself. Now, what can you study with us? So we have um, undergraduate programs available to um, students, um, in particular for international students, we have BA Liberal Arts, a BSc in Psychology, with contemporary applied theatre studies as well, early childhood, and also um, a BA in education or business studies, along with one of the options of accounting, religious studies, or math. The, these programmes would normally be four years um, in duration, but uh, non-EU international students can actually um, apply for an exemption to the third year. So you can actually get your undergraduate degree in three years if you're allowed this exemption. So especially for US students who come over to us, um, you'd be saving yourself the third, uh, saving a full year of tuition by being able to do it in the three years. Using then that, that fourth year of what you would have been doing the undergraduate normally, you could potentially do a master's program with ourselves as well. So in four years, you could potentially then have an undergraduate degree and a master's as well. So it's something to think about maybe um, if, if that's of any um, interest to you. Um, entry requirements, it's a lot of words, pretty much what you will need is your high school diploma and we also require um, specific scores in the SAT or the ACT and um, the application is direct to ourselves in the international office in Mary I. so you'd have that direct contact with staff to ask any of your questions and we don't require, you can apply to us via the common app as well, we're on that. And there's no fee to apply to us and we don't actually require supplemental essay that's not something we need and yeah it's it's a degree from ourselves it's transferable worldwide and tuition fees are quite competitive as well um, if you compare it to say for example tuition fees you might be paying in the us so you're looking at between eleven and a half thousand euro up to about sixteen thousand for the psychology program and like i said you can apply directly to ourselves and have that one-to-one -one direct contact you don't need a visa to uh, come to Ireland um, to study. So that's a, a great thing, no paperwork there. So just to bear that in mind. 
And as a full time international student, you can work part time in Ireland as well. So that's amazing work experience to add to your CV or resume as well. We have student accommodation available within walking distance of the campus and it'd be apartment style living. So you'd be four to an apartment sharing kitchen facilities and a living area and you'd normally always have a room to yourself as well. Okay, and student accommodation is roughly around 2,600 euro per semester. Okay, and that would include utility bills, Wi-Fi, etc. We have a great mix of Irish and international students on the campus. So you'd get a real international experience. And just a few of the facilities there that we have on campus. Like I said, it's a small campus, but we pack a lot in and very great community, lots of student services available um, to support the students throughout their time with us. And you're in Ireland as well. Lots of sports, lots of outdoor activities, lots of fun. It does rain, but your look, <laughs> it's, part of the, it's part of the culture and the character. And like that, you get to go out and about and explore Ireland, um, living in Ireland and experiencing life in Ireland while as a student with us. Okay, just some more pictures there to get you interested in the idea of Ireland and Mary I. And just to say, which in the Irish language is, thanks a million, everybody. And there's our social media links, um, email as well. Um, please do ask any questions or come and have a chat with me in the virtual session afterwards. And that's me, Jeff. Done. Thanks so much, Sarah. Appreciate that. A reminder to all the, the attendees, you can ask questions at any time of all the institutions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Next up, we have the University of Central Lang Lancashire. I butchered that, Emily. I'm sorry. No, it was a wonderful pronunciation. Thank oh, you very much. <laughs> thank you for your grace. <laughs> Okay, I'll just share my screen and hopefully you can see that okay. Um, so my name is Emily Page and I work at the University of Central Lancashire in the north of England. We're considered a modern university, but actually we've been going since 1828. So although we're a modern university in that we only became the University of Central Lancashire in the early 1990s, we have got a really long history of teaching people from all over the world lots of different subjects. We're a pretty big university with staff and student community um, out of around 38,000 people. Um, and about 5,000 of our students on our, on our main campus um, are from all over the world, from over 120 different countries. Um, we've been doing a lot of work on the campus in recent years. We're always upgrading our facilities, and I'll show you a little bit more about it in just a moment. But we've been spending a lot of money on it and making sure that the facilities that are available for our students um, are wonderful for teaching, but also for relaxing and enjoying and experiencing the, the campus in general. We've got our campuses in the UK. We've got three campuses in the UK, with the main one being in Preston. Um, and then we also have a campus in Cyprus. Um, and then we have branches in other parts of the world as well. Um, we have some great scholarship packages available, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that just shortly. Um, and we also accept applications both direct and through UCAS. If you apply directly to us, there is no application fee um, at all. Um, and we have pretty flexible application deadlines for most of our programmes as well. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Preston, and um, which is the city that our main campus is on and the one that most of our international students will come to when they come to the UK. Um, Preston is an, in the northwest of England. It's a pretty small city, but it is still a city and it's got a population of around 140,000 people. Um, it's got a city centre, just like any kind of um, city will have with kind of shopping malls and cinemas and things like that. And the campus is actually only about 10 minutes walk to both the city centre and also the train station in Preston. Um, we're about 40 minutes on the train from Manchester and Liverpool and about two and a half hours to, to London. We're on the fast train network. So if you're interested in getting that experience of living in the UK, but also want to explore other parts of the UK and other cities, then it's a really great base to, to do that from as well. We have got some really easy flight links to Manchester International Airport and you can jump on a train to get to the Preston campus or you can get picked up by the university if that's something you're looking to have. 
as I said earlier, we've been spending a lot of money on the campus. We've just recently opened our new student centre, our new square, um, and that is an area for that includes kind of offices for the student support services and things like that. And um, we've got a beautiful roof garden. We've got student meeting rooms. And um, we've got event spaces. And then last year we opened the Engineering Innovation Centre, um, which is obviously hosting all of our engineering programmes, but it also has some really good learning rooms for subjects um, across the university. We have lots of social spaces, which we upgraded um, a, a year and a half ago. Um, and obviously they're getting the, students are getting the use of them now. We have a lot of accommodation available and we've won awards for our accommodation um, in the pre in previous years. Um, we have guaranteed accommodation and it's all apartment style. So you always have your own bedroom. You always have access to a shared kitchen um, and there is lots of um, clubs and societies that are um, part of the accommodation, but then also part of our student union and the university in general as well. You also get access to a free sports membership and on our main campus, we have a big gym um, and then just off of campus we have shuttle buses that go back and forth it takes about 10 minutes on the shuttle bus we've got a massive big sports arena so if you're into sports it's a really good place to come and if you're into soccer into football then we also have programs where you can get involved with um, a, a local uh, or a club in, in, in a football club in England and get lots of coaching and sports as well as studying with us. In terms of the programmes that we have, we have hundreds of degrees, so I'm not going to go into all of them just now. But if there's a particular programme you're interested in, you can get in touch with me and I will be delighted to give you information on that. You can see on your screen there all of the information of the kind of general subject areas that we have. But within each of these areas, we have multiple degrees that you can study, multiple majors. Um, we have a, a kind of similar fees for our undergraduate and postgraduate. There are some exceptions. Most of them are around £14,500. Um, um, but there are some exceptions. The big one, obviously, you can see on your screen there being medicine. We do accept students coming into medicine at the um, undergraduate level. So you don't have to do pre-med. And that's the case in the whole of the UK, as well as at University of Central Lancashire. We accept FAFSA loans. Um, and we, as I said before, have quite good scholarship packages. We're test flexible for our three-year bachelor's degrees and we're test optional for our four-year bachelor's degrees. So if you've got particular subjects that you're taking or particular exams you're taking, again, you can get in touch with me and I can tell you what the best choices are going to be for you and whether you would be eligible to come into our three-year bachelor's degree or not. Um, the obviously all the costs up there are in pounds roughly speaking you're saying that you're looking at around thirty eight thousand pounds for the whole of your degree and um, sorry thirty eight thousand dollars for the whole of your degree but it does depend um, on scholarships and most of our students will get some of the scholarships scholarships have up to about five thousand pounds which is including things like our bursaries and our academic excellence scholarships as well so all of the contact details are there and I'll also post them into the chat so that you can kind of access them easily. I'm delighted to speak to you at any point and you can contact me and you can book in a one to one meeting anytime. But obviously, I'm also going to be here for an hour in the, um, the, the Zoom room as well. So you can come and have a chat to me this evening. But if you don't have time, book in a meeting with me at a time of your leisure and I'll be delighted to chat to you. But thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Emily. Appreciate that very much. Next up, we have the University of Aberdeen. Hi everyone, I'll just get my screen up. Um, so my name's Amy Easton and I'm with the University of Aberdeen. Um, so hopefully we can get this presentation going. Um, just a moment here. I think that should be working for everyone now. So the University of Aberdeen is what we call an ancient university here in Scotland. Um, we are five, 525 years old, so uh, we have been around for quite some time, um, but we like to think of us as an international, an international, an ancient university with impact. Um, we're based in the city of Aberdeen. If you're not familiar with Scottish geography, Aberdeen is up in the north and on the east coast, and we are Scotland's third largest city. Um, when we say large cities in Scotland, everything is pretty tiny, so we're just over 200,000 people, which makes for a very nice kind of very 
inclusive community when you come to Aberdeen. Um, the city itself, as you can see, is very historic in its appearance and feel, um, but we have all the modern amenities you'd expect from a big city as well. So the university itself, we were founded in 1495 um, and we're still considered a medium-sized university. So we're about 14 and a half thousand students all together of which 34% are international. So we do welcome over 120 different nationalities each year um, and we have a lot to offer. So we currently have over 350 undergraduate degrees to choose from. And if you're looking further afield down the line, um, we have 150 postgraduate programs as well. I do always say that you're going to be in good company when you do come to Aberdeen. We've actually had five Nobel Prize winners um, that have graduated from the university. And then I've also included one of my top uh, information about the university is we're a top 10 most beautiful historic university in the UK. So some other rankings just to note, uh, we're a top five uh, UK institution for our overall student satisfaction. So students that have come to Aberdeen have really enjoyed their time with us. We're also a UK top 20 university in terms of overall rankings. And on the world stage, we're a world top 160 university. Um, so we are mostly one campus. So we're known, uh, what's known as King's College campus is kind of a true campus in the sense that everything is right next to each other. Um, but we do have one other campus, which is our medical campus. Um, so if you were studying medicine, you would be based there for all your practicals um, and kind of on-site learning. If not, all your other classes are at King's College campus. So it is located in Old Aberdeen. So it really has that sense of uh, that old uh, Scottish feel that you would expect, cobbled streets, old signs, lots of statues. Um, but we're really well located within the city. So we're a 20 minute walk from the main city center where you'll find our train stations. We're about 15 minute drive to the international airport so you can get home very easily. Um, and then we also have our dedicated Hellhead Student Village which is about a 15 minute walk as well. So you can live within university housing and only being 15 minute walk to your classes. So just some photos of your campus here. Um, so as I said, it's very historic and it's look and feel. Um, and our accommodation is very modern. So it's all apartment style living. You always have your own bedroom. Depending on the price point, um, you can have a meal plan or no meal plan. Um, now the university itself, because we're in Scotland, we are a little bit different than what you'd see in the uh, other UK institutions. So in Scotland, we have a four year undergraduate degree and Aberdeen offers 12 different schools. So we have over 350 options within these main subject areas, but I would say US students tend to come and do um, either business, divinity, history, philosophy, language, literature. Um, we have a lot of social science students, biology, psychology, geosciences, um, all very popular, but we see US students come in all 12 schools. Now, just some basic entry requirements. We have an MA degree, which is our uh, Masters of Arts. It really is a Bachelor of Arts, but um, the ancient universities in Scotland just have kept that quirk of calling it a Masters of Art. Um, but it's a standard for your bachelors. We look for a 3.0. We are looking for SAT, ACTs, or your AP tests. If you're looking to do a science with us um, or a BSc, it's the same 3.0 plus an SAT or an ACT, but we are really looking for an AP in math or science with that. If you're looking for something else like engineering medicine, we do have higher entry requirements you can find on our website. We will be test optional for 2022. I always say if you can take any of the tests, please do go ahead um, because we don't know what the future will bring. So potentially we might not be test optional for 2023. Um, we're on UCAS, so that's the standard UK application system, but if you know Aberdeen is your only choice looking at the UK, you can use Common App. If you're applying to more than one UK institution, please do use UCAS. Um, some fees, we're pretty affordable. Most of our fees are around £8,500 per year. It can increase, but that's really uh, higher values associated with medicine or engineering. We also offer some scholarships, so you can expect up to £4,000 off that tuition fee in your first year, and then £2,000 after that each year. We're also on FAFSA, so you can bring your student loans with you to Aberdeen. Um, just again, my name is Amy Easton. Um, my email is there for you and the regional manager, so look after everyone. Um, but check us out on social media. I particularly enjoy our podcast called Ask Aberdeen. And that's it from me. Thank you so much. Thanks, Amy. Appreciate that. Next up, we have Barlon University. I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly. 
You said it perfectly. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, thanks for coming on board with us too and sharing your time with us today. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen here. If we can just let me know that we see the presentation, okay? We good? You're good to go. Okay, excellent. So just a little bit about uh, Bar Ilan University. Uh, we're located in the metropolitan area of Tel Aviv, Israel, which is really the central uh, part of the country uh, with very easy access throughout the country as well. So easy bus transportation, really anywhere you'd like to go in the country from south to north. And also the country is in the midst of building a above ground subway system, which is running through the campus as well. So it's a very uh, central location in Israel. I do have a slide here of why would you choose Israel? The top, top reasons really of why would someone wanna come study in Israel? And one of which is that we really offer world-class education. The universities that you see in Israel, most of which are ranked on the, amongst the top 500 of universities um, within the world. Um, also, Israel is known as the country of innovation and technology. We're really considered the second startup nation um, um, on top of Silicon Valley and ranked On. There we go. So you really see that in terms of the personality of the people too. It's a very, I would say, the entrepreneurial and innovative spirit is something that's really uh, welcomed and encouraged in the country and something that you feel on a day to day level and it certainly transfers over in terms of academics as well. Also, I would say Israel has a very strong social life. We were actually ranked amongst the world's number 11 of all kind of the happiest people um, in a country. And I think a lot of that too is just the socialization and the feeling of community when you're here in the country. And again, I think that really, that's something that you're gonna feel on the, um, on the campus as well. It's one thing to bring students to come abroad and study um, internationally, which is uh, no small feat on its own, but, but really having you on campus and feeling you're part of that community and part of a social being, I mean, that's something that we take a lot of effort into and something that you'll feel not only on campus, but in the country in general, too. And then not to mention, of course, Israel has over 4000 years of history and a vast, fascinating culture, which really transcends into different areas such as food and the arts and music, something that you really feel in the country. And then there's amazing landscape and travel, too. So anywhere from the south of the Dead Sea and the Red Sea of Eilat, and then going up into the north and the Galilee, and then Tel Aviv, uh, the beaches, um, and just the city life in general. So just a little bit about Bar Ilan University. We are one of the top universities in the country of Israel, and we're ranked amongst the top 500 of all universities worldwide on a consistent basis over the last years. We have approximately 18,000 students, of which about 900 are international students. And of that, I would say about 400 roughly are coming in from, um, from the US and Canada. And we do have a fully dedicated International Student Services Center that is there to help with all logistical needs of our international students. And that has everything to do with student entry visas, health insurance, accommodation, but also what I was mentioning before about that social activity and community is having a person that's fully dedicated to coming out with a monthly calendar of activities, and just a lot of different social interaction amongst, amongst our students. I did mention our location being in the, the central part of the country and in Tel Aviv. And a lot of, you know, a lot of our research, a lot of the rankings um, comes from the research that we provide and the faculty, the top faculty that are on campus. So really as part as coming into Bar Ilan University, you really have the advantage of choosing how you would like to set up your social community. You could decide to be amongst only uh, students that are coming in and we have students from all across the globe from North America from Asia from Latin America from Europe you could decide to really make that a global experience or you could decide to stay within your cohort of the country that you're coming in from or also integrate within the Israeli population and we do a lot of activities for integration within the Israeli population on campus as well we have eight different faculties, um, all of which are located on our Tel Aviv campus except for our faculty of medicine which is in the north of the country. And then we have different impact research centers that work very closely um, with our community and with startup companies and that technology innovation. It's really hand in hand in terms of the research that's coming out of the university, working hand in hand with the community as well. These are just a few different awards that we've received and different names of professors and faculty that are world renowned 
within the certain fields that they that they teach. And just a few photos of Bar Ilan. We were awarded um, Israel's most beautiful university campus. And a lot of that is because of the greenery of the campus, hence my green background as well. But overall, the campus is also built in a way that's very intimate and easy to get around, lending again for that social community and really feeling that you're part of something and not getting lost um, on the campus. So in terms of what degrees we offer, these are all of our English instructed undergraduate degrees. Um, we have dual degrees in communications and political science, communications in English literature, English literature and linguistics, and also a BA in Jewish studies. Something to note in terms of the length of our programs is they are three years in length rather than four, which four is what you see more customary in North America. Um, and also in terms of the tuition, we are highly subsidized. We are one of the universities in Israel, as I mentioned, which means that we are backed by the Council of Higher Education, which in terms of tuition, that means that we're highly subsidized by the government. So you're looking at roughly about 4,000 US dollars per year in tuition. So when you multiply that by three, it's $12,000 in terms of your degree program, which I know that's a significant reduction from what we see in terms of universities here in North America. Once you go into graduate degrees, and again, these are all of our English instructed programs, that's when you see you start going more STEM related, uh, MBA, physics, brain sciences, and so forth. In terms of our admission requirements, we're looking for a 3.1 GPA. Uh, once you hit a 3.3 GPA, your SAT or ACT is waived. Uh, below a 3.3, we do ask for an 1100, 1100 SAT or 22 ACT. And our application uh, becomes available uh, end of January with a deadline of uh, end of July for the incoming fall 2022 Bye. semester. So in summation, I would say Bar Ilan University definitely provides that academic excellence within a vibrant social community and also a great location and a beautiful, a beautiful campus. So we look forward to, to seeing you hopefully and, and uh, I too will have a session individually after this and I welcome your participation there and meeting with you further. So thank you. Thanks, Shira. I appreciate that. Final institution this evening is Newcastle University. Thank you, Jeff. I'm just going to share my screen. There you go. So my name is Thomas. I am the recruitment manager for North America here at Newcastle University. Um, we are uh, based in the city of Newcastle, Pine, which is very well known in the UK. It's been a very lively, friendly student city. Um, we're seen as the capital of the northeast of England. We're located there where the red pin is. Um, just for reference, London is the gold star down in the southeast there. Um, so you can see the distance uh, by train, it takes just under three hours to get to London or about an hour by flight. Um, we're also very close to Edinburgh, we're only an hour and a half away um, on the other side of the border with Scotland. We're very lucky. We also have our own international airport just outside the city. And from there, you can fly to 80 different destinations, mostly across Europe, but there are um, flights to the Middle East as well and occasional flights over to North America, depending on the time of the year. Newcastle is very well known, as I said, as a student city. It's the, often named as one of the best student cities in the UK, and actually it's one of the top 50 global student cities as well. However, it is an affordable place to live and study, um, and it's actually one of the most affordable student cities in the UK. So you don't have to sacrifice experience for cost. You get to live in a great place and not spend much at the same time. Um, Newcastle is very well known um, as not only being a great student city, but also being a hub for things like innovation, for technology, for advanced manufacturing, and also in the arts sector. Um, and whilst it's a compact city, it's still very lively with lots of things to do and see. So art galleries, theatres, restaurants, bars, um, great nightlife, parks, cinemas, everything you could possibly want as a student. One of the other great things about the city is that um, if you want to get out and, and enjoy the countryside, we have some fantastic uh, scenery. So to the north, um, the west, it's beautiful, unspoiled countryside. And out to the east, um, we've got the coast that's accessible by metro and it only takes 20 minutes uh, to get out to the coast. 
And this is just some of the, the lovely sights and sounds of the city and a bit further afield. Um, the northeast of England is actually home to more castles than any other part of England. So if you're into history, then it's a great place to study. Um, and as I said, we've got the wonderful coast just 20 minutes away from the city centre. We actually are based right in the heart of the city. We actually have a city, what I would call a, a real city centre city center campus in that it does have a campus feel. And as you can see there, the two gold shapes in the bottom left and right are where the majority of our teaching buildings are located. Um, but you're literally a two minute walk from the city centre. So you, you do get to have the best of both worlds. You know, the great thing as well is that um, most of our accommodation is either located on our campuses or a very short walk away. So you get to also live very close by to where you're studying. Um, and we do guarantee accommodation to all of our international students right throughout the degree if they want to live on campus. That is the heart of the university. That's the uh, student union building there in the foreground. Our history dates back to the 1830s. So we are an old university and we do have, and that is reflected in our architecture. Um, but we also have lots of modern buildings. The one in the top left there is, is home to the National Center for Data and the National Center for um, Aging. Um, uh, and in the bottom right there, it's the School of Computer Science. So you can see we don't just have old buildings. We also have very modern ones as well. And we're actually in the process of building a new engineering building at the moment. In terms of our ranking reputation, we are a top 150 university um, and we're also a top 20 university in the UK. We've actually got 13 subjects ranked in the top 10. Um, we're also a founding member of what's called the Russell Group, which is often called the UK's version of the Ivy League, and it includes places like Oxford and Cambridge. We're highly uh, sought after, our graduates are highly sought after, and um, we're one of the most targeted universities in the UK by leading employers, um, and actually a really, really high percentage of our graduates are either in work or further study within just six months of graduating. In terms of uh, our makeup and what we teach, well, we have 27,000 students on our campus from around 120 different countries, um, and they're studying on um, 200 different bachelor's degrees and 300 different master's and PhD programs, so a huge range of programs on offer, and those are our three faculties there. In terms of the subjects we offer within them, there's lots to choose from. Humanities and Social Sciences is our biggest faculty, um, and within that, there's a whole range of different programs. Um, as mentioned previously, medicine, you can do it as an undergraduate degree in the UK. It's the same as well for law and also dentistry and veterinary science as well. So it's worth bearing in mind. Um, so that's law school, for example, you could do a law degree straight out of high school if you wanted, but we have lots of others on offer. We also have something called the Combined Honours Degree at Newcastle, which allows you to pick three different subjects from a list of 20 and combine them into one degree. So you don't just have to pick one major, you can actually do triple major if you wanted. We have a wide range of programs in science, agriculture and engineering. Unusually for a city-based university, we have an agriculture program, which is actually one of the best in the UK. And we actually own and operate our own uh, commercial farms. We also have a marine science program and we have um, a marine research vessel and a marine research base out at the coast. And then finally, we have medical sciences. And like I said, um, we, we offer medicine, which um, we're ranked in the top 100 in the world for that. And um, we've got one of the best hospitals in the UK physically connected to our medical school. And um, so not only are you learning amongst amazing academics, but you're also in a real life hospital situation pretty much from day one as well. In terms of our entry requirements, we are test flexible. Um, so ideally, we're looking for three APs, but we understand some students might not have had a chance to take those over the pandemic, or their schools might not, not offer them. So we can accept other things like enroll, uh, dual enrollment classes, honours classes. Um, so basically, get in touch with me if there's a pro, if you're in that situation where you don't have three APs, and I can explain what we would do in that situation. Just to wrap up, um, in terms of our support, we have a whole range of support available. Um, the cute dogs there, they're part of our Dogs and Welfare program, but we offer lots of other help, academic support, finance advice, um, our security team, and also our career service, which is available up to three years after graduation. We're also one of the best universities in the UK for sports. We're in the top 10 in the UK for sports, and we've also got over 200 different societies um, as well. In terms of tuition, you're looking at about $40,000 a year cost of attendance. And as, as one's pointed out, it's a three-year degree. Um, and we have a three-year graduation rate of 96%. But we do have scholarships available. And we do also have, um, we can use federal or private loans as well. If you'd like to find out more, that's our virtual activities. Um, and you can also get in touch with me. But also, you can join my room afterwards um, and speak to me one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks, Thomas. Appreciate that. I hope I didn't interrupt you. Did I did I interrupt you? You're good. No, that was everything. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. 
Well, we've got a few minutes left here. Why don't I invite all the representatives back on camera? And I thought we would go through uh, maybe a question or two just to kind of give you some different thoughts on their institution. So the first question we're gonna to cover tonight is, what is the one thing you want us to remember this evening about your institution? So uh, hopefully uh, they've had a couple of minutes to get ready for that. Um, I am going to ask uh, Sarah to lead us off at uh, Mary Immaculate. Sure. Um, I suppose because of the fact that we're a smaller institution, only 5,000 students, um, it is very easy for international students to, to settle in that bit more quickly, um, feel more at home, I suppose. So what we do say is that we become a home away from home, it, even though we're, you know, might be on the other side of the world for some people coming over to us. Um, we're a real home away from home and everybody does genuinely get to know each other, a real community while also offering, you know, a fantastic education and um, experience abroad. So I think, um, yeah, that's that's hopefully what they remember about, about Mary I from this. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate that. Emily, what do you got for us? Yeah, I think I just want people to understand that the university itself is really friendly, really um, a nice place to be. We've got some excellent support and that's included before you even come. So there is no question that's too stupid. There is no question that will ever upset us. Um, if you've got anything that you want to know about, get in touch with us because that's that's what we're here to do. Um, I, I'm, I, my name is Emily. Get in touch with me. But I've got colleagues across the university that help students from before they, they apply to way after after what they've graduated from the university. And that's something we think is really important. And that's what I'm here to do to help you today. Um, and there's so many people doing that right the way through your, your time at University of Central Lancashire. Thanks, Emily. Amy, what do you got for us? I think the thing to remember about the University of Aberdeen is that you, you'd be coming to have a real Scottish experience, but would be graduating with a four-year undergraduate degree um, from one of the top universities um, in Scotland. Um, so Scottish experience, definitely a campus that you can navigate and you're going to get that four-year degree from us. Very good. Uh, Shira, what do, you, what do you think for us? What? There we go. Oh. Thanks. I would say on our end from Barilan University is really is you're getting that academic excellence and also with that community that I spoke about, that social community. And that goes also into the classroom too. The classroom sizes are typically smaller between 20 to 25 people. And you have a faculty that really welcomes and encourages a very engaging type of discussion, uh, type of classroom feel. So it's that community that you feel on a social, um, social level and also in the classroom and the academics too. Perfect. And then Thomas, wrap us up. What is the one thing you want us to remember about Newcastle University? Oh, that's such a, a difficult one. Um, I would say that although we are a large university, 27,000 or so students, we're, we're, very, um, we're very welcoming and friendly. And we were actually named a third for uh, our efforts during the pandemic to uh, make sure we remain diverse and inclusive. Um, and I would say that I, I was an undergraduate student in Newcastle myself, and I had friends from such wide variety of backgrounds. Um, and I think that's represented on our campus. We have students from all walks of life. We've educated members of the British Royal Family through to people like myself who were the first in their, uh, in their family to go to university. So we've got everybody on campus and I think you will find a place for you. Self. Very good. Well, I think that's about all the time we have this evening. Thank you all for attending this evening. Thank you to our representatives for being with us as well and sharing your time and talents. Uh, when we wrap up here, there will be a quick survey we ask you to fill out. And then also don't forget there will be another session tomorrow evening, as well as this evening's uh, additional individual sessions for the institutions. On behalf of StriveScan, my name is Jeff. Thanks for joining us and have a great evening. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.